Good afternoon to you. It is uh, Monday the 7th of January 2013. We're going to do a session today on asthma as part of anatomy and physiology. And we're doing this on the basis that it hasn't been examined for a little while, much like the other topics we've uh, looked at. In fact, last time this question, the only time this question was in January 2011 as part of a uh, 10 mark question. So we're kind of considering this topic might come up as a shorter answer question in your exam, but certainly one that many students get tripped up by from one that would be a good advantage for you to have an excellent awareness of. So let's really focus on two things. We're going to have a look at what asthma is and what causes it and what the effects of asthma are on people during, uh, during sporting activities. So first of all, let's think about what this is. Um, first of all, we'd have to say that it's a reduction in the amount of oxygen getting into the lungs. And we can see the reason for that over here. If we have a look at um, these two images here, there's a normal bronchial pulmonary bronchus uh, down here, which is open, allowing good airflow into the lungs. And here we have what we call a constricted um, bronchial. Constricted, of course, means closed down or uh, less space available um, bron bronchial. So we need to use this term as constricted bronchial. And of course, the, the influence of that is less O2 in lungs. And therefore, um, people who are suffering from asthma sometimes appear to be breathless or wheezing. And you will have Either some of you will have experienced it, even, um, but many of you will have witnessed it um, with other people. Um, and we think that the primary cause of asthma is this constriction of the bronchioles. So that's the main reason it occurs, but that there are triggers that cause this constriction. So, for example, we look at triggers such as um, allergens, such as pollen, or we often have, of course, animals or fumes. You can think about the notion of pollution, for example, as maybe one of the reasons um, that uh, asthma is more common these days than uh, previously. They were perhaps suffering for a little bit more uh, pollution in certain parts of our, our environment. Um, but in terms of activity sense, we expect that the other factor that brings on asthma is the cold. So something like winter sports, playing uh, in football, rugby, hockey, in cold environment, for example, can bring on asthma, can trigger asthma. The other factor which can cause it is chemicals. Uh, now, it could be things uh, such as cleaning products, for example, but we know that chlorine in swimming pools can have the tendency to trigger asthma attacks, so therefore it is relevant to the sporting environment. Well, okay, that's what um, it is, and how does this actually affect people? Well, look, in extreme cases, this condition, because of the lack of oxygen reaching the lungs, can actually produce unconsciousness in people, so it can be quite a dangerous or serious condition if left untreated. So we do have to be quite aware uh, of this condition when uh, working with young people, particularly those of you that are going into kind of coaching environments. Um, secondly, it does limit athletic performance. You will know this, of course, because you've seen people who have to go to the sideline to retrieve inhalers, which I'll come back to in a moment, things such as that. But it can uh, limit athletic performance, especially if it is an aerobic performance, such as an endurance activity or a game-based activity. And the main reason that is the case is that we ultimately are getting less, oops, let's try that again, uh, less O2 to muscles. So in performance sense, we're actually delivering less oxygen to muscles. So therefore, we, for example, have a reduced tidal volume. We have a less efficient gas exchange, both externally at the lung and internally at the muscle. We therefore have to work anaerobically, and we produce greater levels of lactic acid, which of course leads to obla, as you know, as second years. Um, and if we reach obla, that means that we have to reduce inten intensity of exercise, or we have to rest so because of the seriousness of the condition and because of the impact that the condition does have on um, athletic performance, we have to look at the notion of prevention and treatment of this condition. So first of all, and really the most obvious point, is that we can use inhalers. Now do bear in mind that we have different types. Unfortunately, um, I, well, I do have blue. I don't have brown, which is the color I so I'll use an orange color for that. But first of all, blue inhalers, they're what we call short-acting inhalers. They are, if you like, a treatment for wheezing and short 
breathlessness. Um, but the brown in here, they're actually called bronchodilators, by the way, is, uh, those ones, Ventolin is a good example. Um, but the brown ones, these are long acting, and they're what we call preventative um, inhalers. And they actually ensure that the bronchus actually remain open at all times. Uh, and they actually uh, are used daily. They're usually used morning and night uh, from waking and then before. Um, bed, and it's a preventative way of um, making sure that an asthma attack will not occur. It's one of the things that we can do, of course. But what are some of the others? Well, first of all, one of the really important things in an athletic sense is that we do a warm up. It sound, seems really obvious, but rather than going from a very kind of inactive to a very active state, warm up should be progressive. Oops, and shouldn't lead to a jump in aerobic activity but should be progressive and therefore we're less likely to uh, suffer that um, kind of asthma attack type situation. Thirdly, we can actually train a specific part of our body and I wonder if you know what this is. Got any ideas? Well of course we train the inspiratory muscles. Okay, so our bronchus are actually constricted perhaps, but because for example our diaphragm and our external intercostal muscles are stronger, we can actually still bring in the same amount of air and therefore oxygen. And there's numerous uh, methods to do this. They're all called IMT, Inspiratory Muscle Training. It's a really good thing for you to use. And you, very often these are in the form of mouthpieces that we use while we're exercising, which actually forces to breathe harder while we're exercising and causes to increase the strength of those muscles. Well, next one, we can control our breathing. That sounds obvious, but actually practicing our breathing rhythm and technique can mean that we can both stay calm um, and that we can uh, control our breathing during exercise conditions. So control of breathing exercises work. We also believe largely that a diet can have a right diet can have a positive impact drinking lots of water taking lots of antioxidants and vitamins in the form of fresh fruit and vegetables really important is the notion of fish and i'm actually going to underline that in blue because we're not just about any fish but we're talking about what we refer to as blue fish or oily fish things like mackerel sardines and so on which can actually help to control asthma we also want to have a low salt diet and one of the really interesting ones i think particularly at the moment is the use of caffeine. Caffeine is actually good for asthma because what caffeine is able to do is actually a bronchodilator. So it actually opens these bronchus and makes them dilate. And of course now, in performance sense, caffeine is no longer banned uh, by the IOC and WADA so it can be used in any um, quantities for athletes that suffer from these conditions. I'm just going to jump over here, a bit of less space here. Of course we must not we must not smoke. It's a fairly obvious one, but we make sure we do not smoke and we exercise regularly. I'm going to fit this up here somewhere so we are healthy and strong. And if we manage to fulfill those aspects of life, then we are very likely to be able to control or to prevent asthma. Now, there is one other obvious one, of course, which most people with asthma do actually do, and that's, of course, that we actually. Um, prevent our exposure to the triggers that cause our asthma. So you'll find that people with asthma will be very deliberate in springtime about whether they're around um, plants and grass and high pollen days, for example, we avoid those types of scenarios or we avoid exercising very cold conditions because it can bring on asthma attacks as the trigger. Those things might be uh, individual and different from person to person, but of course we can avoid those things. So three sections there. We've looked at what asthma is, what the effector and how to prevent or treat it. Be ready to answer one of those sections or more in your exam on January the 15th, which of course, how exciting, is a week tomorrow. So I hope you find the sessions useful. Uh, keep working hard and I hope it's going well. See you soon. Bye.